Have a seat. I have to go and write a prescription for another patient, and then I'll be right with you. Oh, sure. Take your time, sis. Well, let's have a look. How are you feeling? I wasn't going to come here, you know. Why? Because you don't have health insurance. I told you, it's not a problem. No. Because I didn't want to hear a lecture from you. You're going to die, you know. I know. I was the one who told you. I have AIDS, remember? No. I mean, since Adam and Eve made the wrong decision, life is 100% fatal. I knew I'd get a lecture. Raise your arms a little. Okay. Liz, do you know that one of the biggest obstacles of the medical field is that patients don't take their medicine? Is this part of the lecture? Just listen. All right, I'm listening. When I prescribe medication for my patients, I know that more than half of them won't take it faithfully as prescribed. And some of them won't take the medicine at all. Is that true? More than half. Well, I promise that, if you prescribe something for me, I'll take it like clockwork. I'm not so sure. All right, let's hear the I told you so. You warned me to protect myself against the AIDS virus. Well, that too. But I'm thinking now about an ongoing conversation you and I used to have when we were in college about Mother Teresa and... And Adolf Hitler. Yes. Yeah, that never made sense to me. You said that, if Mother Vissar died without accepting Jesus as her personal savior, she would go to hell. In spite of all the good things she did in her life. That's right. And Adolf Hilter, after he murdered 11 million people, he could go to heaven, if he accepted Jesus as his personal savior. Yes. Does that make any more sense to you, now that you have a terminal illness? I don't know. Why should it? Well, I'm going to prescribe some new drugs for you that will prolong your life for several months. Maybe even for years, if you're taken faithfully. Yes. I told you I would. But you've had a fatal disease since you were born. And a physician greater than I prescribed a cure for you that will delay your death permanently. Yet, you refuse to take the cure. I see where you're going with this. But what does that have to do with Adolf Hitler and Mother Vispa? They both had the same fatal disease that you have. They didn't have AIDS. No. But the three of you were all born with the same fatal disease. You mean sin? Yes. Now, one of you did bad deeds, and then he died. One of you did good deeds, but she died anyway. And one of you was merely self-indulgent and now she's about to die. The deeds, good or bad, don't affect the outcome of this disease. The disease is sin. And whether it's a little tiny sin, like Mother Teresa's or a horrific sin like Hitler's. Any sin in an entire lifetime leads to death. But a person's deeds must count for something. They do. Bad deeds, like Hitler's, usually shorten a person's life. Hitler died in the prime of his life. And Mother Teresa's good deeds allowed her to live a much longer and more fulfilling life. But just like the medications you'll be taking, good deeds won't cure the disease. They'll only make life more pleasant and delay the inevitable. Well, you're right. The discussions about Mother Vissar and Hitler do become clearer when I'm staring death in the face. Good, I like my patients to make informed decisions. Well, Doctor, how long do I have to live? It depends on which medicine you're willing to swallow. This is more like heart surgery than choosing a medicine, isn't it? Yes, I guess it is. You know what I'm going to hate worse than telling Jesus I'm sorry? What's that? Admitting to you, that I was wrong. I will write you a prescription, so you can pick it up on the way out. Anything you say, Doctor. Based on a play by Bob Snook. Conditions for use, do not sell any part of this script, even if you rewrite it. Pay no royalties, even if you make money from performances. You may reproduce and distribute this script freely, but all copies must contain this copyright statement.